While this is a basic course, there are some prerequisites that you must fully understand. First of all, you should be familiar with the programming of our remotes in the Complete Control Program, or CCP, and be able to handle all the basic programming steps. In addition, you should have taken the Introduction to CCP course number 130. Please stop now if you don't meet these simple requirements. In this course, you will learn how to use variables in programming our controls. And to get us going, we'll start with an explanation of what makes a proper macro, because if you aren't making macros correctly, adding variables will not help. You'll then learn what a variable is, how they'll help improve your macros, followed by how to create them. We'll end with some demonstrations of how to use variables in our CCP software. The CCP example files we'll be using are available for separate viewing in the URC toolbox. Now, variables can be used in a number of different ways, but in this course we're going to focus on the basics. That means we aren't going to cover how to use variables with graphics, how to use if-else statements, or any other specific details on how to use variables in our MX980 and above models. These subjects and more will be covered in our more advanced courses. Let's begin with a quick understanding of what makes a great macro. The key to a great macro is to design it in such a way as to ensure that it always works. Providing a repeatable, reliable, and simple experience should be your goal, and bulletproof macros are how you do that. Now what you see is an example of a watch DVD macro. We're going to use a flowchart here to show all the steps in this macro and in their correct order. And as you can see, we start by turning on all of the devices, starting with those that take the longest to turn on. Then we introduce a delay, giving the television and receiver a chance to warm up. We then tell the receiver to go to the correct input. Since televisions can have an awfully long warm-up time, some front projectors can take 30 seconds or more, we added an additional 10 second delay. Then we tell the TV to go to the correct input, followed by a command that will tell the remote to jump and become a DVD remote control. This qualifies as a bulletproof macro because it will always work and always provide the same results. You should be able to see the obvious drawbacks to a bulletproof macro. We always turn on the TV and wait quite a bit for it to turn on, even if we've already turned it on in a previous macro. This is one of the many things that we can use variables to improve upon. If we isolate the commands that are included specifically for the television, we see that turning it on is always going to add a 15 second delay when we try to watch something like a DVD. Now, Some programmers are so unhappy that a macro can take this long, they actually give their customers an all-on macro to turn on everything in the system. Even though this means that things you may not use are still sucking up electricity and shortening their lifespans. Of course, we can also look at how a macro would appear if we would just ensure the TV was already on. It's clearly much shorter, meaning faster, and still results in our watching a DVD. So let's take a look at those two macros side by side. Both can be valid, although only the one on the left is the one you can be certain will always work. Now, wouldn't it be great if you could program for both of these, if the remote could spit out the longer one when needed and the shorter one whenever possible? Imagine if the remote could just ask a simple question. When you hit the Watch DVD button, it says, Is the TV on? And if the answer was no, it would send out the long macro. And if the answer was yes, it would send out the short one. Now, this is exactly one of the things that a variable can do for you. Essentially putting two different macros on a single button and deciding which one to send based on the circumstances. Now, a quick point here. Variables can do quite a bit more than just help the, rem the remote remember what the TV is turned on or turned off. But most people seem to grasp this concept a lot more easily when we go through an example like this. So what is a variable? Well, a variable is what allows you to put both of these macro options onto a single button. It does this by tying the macro to a simple statement like the one we saw on the last screen. We then say the macro is dependent upon the variable. But variables don't work with yes or no questions. Instead, they must be written as true or false, which really is about the same thing. Now, when you want to have the ability to put two macros on the same button, you create a statement like TV is on. And when that's a true statement, a particular macro gets sent. And when that's a false statement, a different macro gets sent. Now, if at this point you're thinking that this is a lot of stuff to go over just to make your macro shorter, you're correct. In all likelihood, you're never going to perform the exact example that we're using here. But you'll see some other ways to use variables after we firm up your understanding of the concept. So back to our two macros. If we had a variable statement, TV is on, and if it's false, we tell the remote to send out the macro on the left side of the screen. If it's true, we tell it to send out the macro on the right. Does this still make sense? 
two macros, one button, and if the variable is true, we get one macro. If it's false, we get the other. Hopefully you're on board and beginning to think of another question like, how on earth does a remote even know if something is true or false? Well, you obviously have to tell it. This is a very important point to grasp. You'll soon, soon see how to utilize variables, but you must realize that a remote control is a one-way device. It doesn't actually know anything unless you tell it. Now since a macro can be dependent upon a variable, you must determine if the variable is true or false by default. In the example of TV is on, it makes sense to say this is a false statement by default because it's off more than it's on, <laughs> unless you're the world's worst parent. The second part of this is to remember that when the variable should change, like when you do turn the TV on, you must also alert the remote control to the change from true to false or back again. Now let's take a look at those two macros again. If we said that the variable TV is on is false by default, the first time you hit the watch DVD button, the macro on the left would automatically go out. But inside of that macro, you turn the TV on. So you need to insert something to tell the remote control that the variable is now true. Does that make sense? The variable is by false by the default that you sent. Then the macro turns on the TV. So you must change the variable to true, because turning on the TV makes TV is on true. Here's how that step would appear. Notice that I put it immediately after the TV on command. I did that on purpose so that anyone who looked at my work could easily see why I changed the variable at this point. And one last point. We told the remote that the variable is now true, which means the remote will not try to turn the TV on. At some point, the variable must become false again. When do you think that would be? Yep, hopefully you guessed that. Whenever we turn the TV back off, like the all-off macro you see on the screen, we must remember to tell the remote control that the variable has changed back to its default state. The green box shows us how that would appear in your macro. So let's recap. A variable is a way for the remote to remember what is done and react accordingly. It can do this because you create two different macros and the remote decides which to send based on a variable that is true or false. Now lastly, the remote can only know this information because you programmed it that way. Please keep in mind that we've only touched on one use for variables. After you see how to enter this in CCP, we'll take a look at a few other ways variables can improve your programming. Now let's see how to use a variable inside of CCP. Here's that same basic watch DVD macro as it would appear in the CCP software. It's the same type of normal macro you've probably done many times already. But have you ever noticed that normal is just one type of macro that you can create? I'm going to click on this box and what you're going to see is that there's an option to select variable as a type of macro that you're creating. Notice that once you've done that, the macro window changes slightly. There are no, now two tabs labeled false and true. These represent the two macros that you will create. In this close-up, you can see that false is the macro being displayed. And here are two screenshots. The one on the left is where false has been selected, and the one on the right shows true being selected. Now obviously this gives us two macro windows that we can program. But before we do, I should remind you the macros are dependent upon a variable, and you need to put that in to make everything work. Notice the red circle? It shows a box labeled variable and it's empty. When I click it down, it shows the only option I have is to create a new variable. When you select the new variable option, it gives us a new box to fill out labeled add variable. I'm going to type in TV is on and then select OK. Now our watch DVD macro is dependent upon a variable called TV is on. Two screenshots again show us what our two different watch DVD macros will look like. Notice that the one on the left, the false one, is longer than the true one on the right, just like the example that we started with. Now let's focus just on the false macro. In this macro, we turn on the TV. Now this should make the variable TV is on a true statement, so we have to actually alert the remote control to this fact.
You do that by clicking on the V equals 1 option that I've circled up above. This causes another window to pop open. And this is the window where we can set the variable to a new value. You just select the name of the variable, click on True, follow that up by clicking on the Set button, and ta-da, the remote gets the message, and the variable is now true again. I then drag the command so it appears immediately after the TV is on command, making it easy for anyone to check my work. Now we're halfway done. But I want to create a macro where the variable gets set back to false. So back to CCP, I'm going to select the off button. The empty macro window is going to show there isn't currently anything programmed to that particular button. Now you can see I've added the all off commands, and it's important to note that this is a normal macro. It's not a variable dependent macro, it's a normal macro. That's because this particular macro is not dependent upon the variable. The same commands are going to go out no matter what we do. And here I've clicked on the V equals 1 button and included a step to tell the remote that the TV is off again, or more precisely, that the variable statement TV is on is again false. Well, now that we've covered everything, let's take a look at a couple other ways that you might use variables. You might use variables to remember who's using the system, or even remember what zone they're in. We're going to start with remembering who the user is. Now, this may have never occurred to you before, but often there are two types of the users in the, fam in the family, a power user and a basic user. Power users are the propeller head types who can easily grasp all the concepts of how to use the system. They like to play with surround modes and aspect ratios. On the other hand, basic users really just want to push a button and have stuff work. Trying to create a user interface for two types of users can be challenging, but using variables makes it pretty easy. First, you'd create a main start page that lists users instead of devices. Then I create my actual devices here on page 2. So I have page 1, which is the only visible page, because what I'm going to do on page 2 is right click in the tree view area and select to hide that page. This way the customer can't actually get to this page unless they first choose what type of user they are. Now I'm going to create a very simple normal macro for basic and power users. But first I need to create a variable which I'll call user is basic. I do that by clicking on that V equals 1 button in the, ma in the macro window and then I uh, see the action variable setting box open. I select add new. You see that down in the lower left of the box? The new add variable box opens up and I type in user is basic and I select that as OK. Since I'm doing this first for the basic user, I'm going to say that the new variable is a true one and hit the set button. Now, if the user were to hit the basic user button, the one I circled, they would set a variable called user is basic as true. You see that in the macro window? Step number one, variable called user is basic equals true. This way the remote can remember who's using the system. But I also need to have the remote jump to the source page after selecting the variable, so I added a page jump to page 2 as the second and final step in the macro. Now for the power user button, I'm going to create a simple similar macro, except this time I'm going to say the variable user is basic is in fact false. They can now hit either button. Now, did you know that with most DVD players, pressing stop, stop, play, will cause you to skip the previews in the menu and go right to the movie. This is the kind of experience that a basic user is looking for. So let's see how I put that together in the Watch DVD macro. Here you see the Watch DVD macro. This is the macro that goes when the variable called user is basic is false. It's a standard macro like you would normally do. And this is the macro that gets sent when the variable called user is basic is true. This macro includes the stop, stop, play sequences, so the basic user just starts watching the movie. So there's your first example of another way to use variables in programming and give your customers a more intuitive control. Well, now that you've seen the two types of user examples, let's see how variables can make a two-zone system easier to use. This time we'll start with a main page that has two options, whole house music or theater system. We put that on the first page and again create the sources on page 2, which we hide from the customer. Now let's focus on the theater system macro. 
It'll be a simple one with just two commands. It sets a variable called in theater is true and page jumps to the source page. Notice that this is a normal macro. On the source page, we'll focus on the satellite radio button. This is where it'll be a macro that's dependent on a variable called in theater. If in theater is true, the macro turns on the main zone, waiting for it to warm up. Then it selects XM as the source, and a jump becomes an XM controller. On the other hand, if the user is somewhere else in the house, the variable in theater will be false, and they'll get this macro. Here the macro turns on zone 2, waits for it to warm up, and then switches to XM. And that's the second example of ways to use variables. I hope you're able to understand all that we covered here. Now remember, I've posted all these three different CCP example files on our URC Toolbox website. Feel free to download them all if you'd like to have your own copy of what we did. So, what did we cover? How to use variables to improve control for different types of users. How to use variables to make two zone systems easier to use. And finally, how to use variables to remember what's off or on.